Did you know that the air all around us pushes on us, it pushes on things? It's called atmospheric pressure, sometimes referred to as barometric pressure. And we're going to learn about that uh, in this video. We're also going to learn about how we can measure the pressure of both the gas in the atmosphere and also just like the amount of pressure that's in, say, like a, a gas tank or something like that. Um, and to measure pressure, we use a device called manometers and barometers. You may have heard about these before. So we'll learn how these work. And we'll learn about the units that we use to measure pressure, which sound kind of weird, millimeters of mercury and millimeters of water. But we'll talk about what they actually mean and how we can use them to measure pressure. So we've already looked at one way that gases can exert pressure. Gases are made up of a whole bunch of different atoms and molecules. In air, for example, we've got nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon dioxide. And I want you to think of each of these atoms or molecules like a tiny little ping pong ball. And when we have a sample of gas that's maybe like inside a tire or inside a balloon, these guys, these particles of gas, are all flying around really fast and they're smacking into the insides of the balloon or into the tire and they're exerting a pressure because that's smacking and that's what keeps the tire inflated, that's what keeps it hard, that's what keeps the balloon inflated. Sometimes I refer to this as like the lottery ball model of gas pressure because just you know like you've got one of those plastic lottery ball things with all the lottery balls bouncing around. They're, they're smashing into the side of the container and so all these ping pong balls are exerting a pressure on the inside of the container because they're like in constant motion flying around inside there. Okay, so that's one way that gases can exert pressure. But it's not the only way that gases can exert pressure. Here's the other way. Imagine that we could make a giant ball pit and fill it with these lottery ping pong balls. You know what a ball pit is, right? It's like one of those things that you jump into at a fast food restaurant with all those balls of different colors. The ball pit that we're going to make, though, goes miles and miles up. And it's packed all the way to the top with ping pong balls. Once you got to the bottom of this ball pit, there would be a lot of pressure of all these ping pong balls pressing down on you. And that is the way the gas in the atmosphere, the air that's around us in the environment exerts pressure on everything on the surface of the earth. It's like ping pong balls. Think of the molecules and atoms that make up the air like tiny ping pong balls and they're stacked miles and miles high all the way up into space to where space begins. And the weight of all of them just pushing on things just like a ball pit full of ping pong balls, we're at the bottom of it. And they exert a pressure on everything. Sometimes people say, oh, no, no, but um, they're pushing down, but so when I'm in my house or when I'm in my car, I'm not um, getting them pressing on me. It's like, yeah, you are. Because if air can get into your house or into your car, it totally can, they're able to seep in and push on you. The reason you don't feel this amount of pressure is for one, because you're totally used to it, and secondly, because it pushes on all parts of you equally. We'll talk about that when we, we'll talk about what that means in a minute, but that's why you don't feel like you're being pushed on all the time. But still, the gas around you, just because it goes so high up into the atmosphere, is pushing down, it's exerting pressure. So let's talk about how we could measure this pressure. All right, we want to see like how much does the air around us push on things. In a previous video, we talked about how we can use a U-tube to measure gas pressure. So what a U-tube is is it's just like um, a plastic uh, or like a glass tube that's bent in the shape of a U, you know, creative name U-tube, and then you add some water to it, and the water is gonna even out here down the bottom. And then you exert pressure to one side, and you see the water level go up and down. We can't use a U-tube like this, though, to measure the amount of pressure that the air around us is pushing. And here's why. Because atmospheric pressure, the pressure of air in the environment, presses on everything equally. 
So that means that it's gonna push on this side of the U-tube, it's gonna push the water on this side of the U-tube, and it's also gonna push down on the water on this side of the U-tube. So they're gonna even themselves out. One side isn't gonna be higher than the other because we're getting the same amount of pushing on both sides from the air and the environment. The weight of all that air pushing down. So in order to measure the amount of pressure in the environment, here's what we gotta do. We gotta close one of these sides of the U-tube off. And we gotta suck all the air out of it. So we call a vacuum when we have something like a, a, a glass ball or something that all the air has been sucked out of. So we put this, this glass thing at the end of it and we suck all the air out. So now there's no air pressure pushing on this side of the water. And the only thing that's pushing it is the air pressure that's pressing on this side that's still open to the atmosphere. Okay. So, no air here, nothing to push. The only thing that can push is the pressure from the atmosphere on this side. And so when this happens, because of the pushing on this side, on the left side, it's gonna push the water down on this side, and then it's gonna come and move up on this side of the U-tube. And so now we can measure to find out the amount of pushing, the amount of pressure, the amount of force that's being exerted here. We can measure the distance between this uh, low water level and this high water level. And we can just like take a ruler and measure low to high. Now, when people actually do this, they tend not to use water in YouTube. I mean, you could use water in YouTube. But much more commonly, people use a metal called mercury. Mercury is a liquid metal, so it's much more dense than water is, and that makes it easier to work with when we're doing something like pressure measurements. So imagine that instead of water, this is a liquid metal called mercury. And if we do this at sea level, we get 760 millimeters between the bottom and the top. And since it's mercury that we're measuring, it's this liquid metal, we write millimeters Hg, where the Hg stands for mercury. That's its elemental symbol, okay? If we're doing this with water, the distance would be a lot greater, and we'd say millimeters H2O. It wouldn't be 760 millimeters of H2O, it would be way bigger. But anyway, we're gonna worry about millimeters of mercury for right now, okay? So this is how we can measure the amount of pressure that's in the environment by using a U-tube like this with a vacuum on one end so there's no pushing, the only pushing comes on this side. Then we measure top to bottom, okay? Now I said, we'll get about 760 millimeters of mercury if we do this at sea level, which is like sort of like this, our standard default altitude. The amount of pressure in the atmosphere changes if we go up a mountain or if we go down below sea level. Here's why. I said that atmospheric pressure is caused by this like giant ball pit of air particles that push down on everything below them. So at sea level, we have 760 millimeters of mercury because all of this air is pushing down. But if we go to the top of a mountain, there's just not as much air above a mountain as there is air above the ground at sea level, right? It's like being higher up in the ball pit. You don't have as many ping pong balls pushing on you when you're halfway up the ball pit, so you have less pressure. So if we took a similar U-tube and did this, took a measurement of the pressure on top of a mountain, this is what it would look like. There would be a less difference between the low side and the high side because the force that the air is exerting on this side isn't as, as much because there's just not as much air to push down. It's a smaller amount. So the difference between low to high is smaller, which means that there's less pressure. So we can say the higher up we go, the higher the altitude, the lower the pressure. Now the opposite is true if we go down below sea level. If we go to somewhere like Death Valley in California, 
um, which is part of the desert that is below sea level, or if we like dug way down into the earth and we went into like a mine or something, which is like super, super low below sea level. Then, check this out, here we are in a mine or here we are in Death Valley or something. There's so much more air on top of this than there is at sea level or there is on the top of the mountain. This is like going super, super, super low down in our ball pit of ping pong balls. There's way more pressure. And so if we took our YouTube with a vacuum on one side, we would get more pressure pushing down. You see the arrow's bigger. I'm using that to represent how hard the push is. We'd get more of a push because there's more air pressing down. And the distance between the low side of the mercury and the high side of the mercury would be greater, which means that the pressure is higher. So the lower down we go, the more pressure. The higher up you go, the less air is pushing down on you and the less atmospheric pressure you have. Okay, so we saw how we can measure the pressure that the gas in the atmosphere exerts. Let's now talk about how we can measure the pressure of gas that's just like in a tank or something like that. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to use something that's very similar. Okay? It's got a U-tube here and we've got this vacuum here at the, at the end and we hook one side of the U-tube up to the gas tank that we want to measure the pressure in, okay? So we take the gas tank, hook it in here, and now the gas from here is going to flow into this side of the U-tube. And what that's going to do is it's going to exert a pressure on this side of the water, push it down, and push this side of the water up. Actually, let's imagine we're using mercury here, okay? And now let's say that the pressure of the air inside this gas tank, or the gas inside this gas tank, pushes the uh, pushes the mercury apart uh, 800 uh, millimeters. Okay, so we can say that the pressure of the gas inside this tank is 800 millimeters of mercury. Okay, now here's something that's sometimes confusing for people. If we took this same U-tube and we snapped off the glass vacuum at the end of it. The height of the mercury here would change. And if I snap this off, it would go way down. And now I'd only get a height of 40 millimeters of mercury. Here's why. This is a really important thing in this example, there's nothing in the vacuum. So there's nothing pushing on this side of the mercury. The only thing that's pushing is the gas from the gas tank on this side of the mercury, okay? But as soon as I snap off the vacuum here on the top, now in addition to the gas tank pushing, the atmosphere the pressure from the air around us is pushing down with 760 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure on this side. And then we have 800 millimeters of mercury getting pressed down on the other side. All right, so we have 800 on this side and 760 from the atmosphere on this side. And so it turns out that these guys would even themselves out if they were equal, but instead the push is a little bit more on this side, because this is 40, 800 is 40 more than 760. So the difference that we see from low to high on this side is 40. Here I have a gas tank that's hooked up to a U-tube with a vacuum on the end. And in this case, I get a reading of 60, 60 millimeters of mercury. Okay. Now remember, when I snap this off, I break this off, now pressure from the atmosphere is going to push down on this side with 760 millimeters of mercury's worth of pressure. Okay, So that's going to push this down and push this up. The 60 millimeters of mercury that I have from this, that's not going to be enough to hold back the 760 millimeters of mercury coming at me from this side, okay? So here it is. I break this off, and now I have, pushing down here, 
760 millimeters of mercury. And what that's going to do is it's going to push this up. And now I'm going to have a difference on the bottom here to the top of 700. But look, it's in the opposite direction because the 760 is pushing more on this side and the 60 pushing from this side, it's not enough to push against it. The devices that we use to measure atmospheric pressure and the pressure in like a container of gas are very similar. If we're using a U-tube to measure atmospheric pressure, we call it a barometer. And if we're using a U-tube or any other device to measure the amount of pressure in just like a gas sample, like a tank of gas, we call it a manometer. Not a manometer, but a manometer. So in this lesson, we've talked about how to measure pressure in units called millimeters of mercury and millimeters of water. But uh, if you need to convert that pressure into another unit, we've got a video on gas pressure conversions. We show you how to convert millimeters of mercury into kilopascals, torr, and uh, atmospheres of pressure, which are other units.